Interested in learning how we blend coffees for espresso? If so, stay tuned. All right, so in today's video, I thought that we'd go a little bit into how we actually blend coffees to make espresso and the impact that different components will have in an espresso blend. And while we're talking about espresso today, this can actually be applied to any kind of blend that you're making for any kind of brewing method. So yesterday was our roast day, and typically when we're roasting coffee, we'll actually pull individual samples from each batch. And we'll use these samples as a reference point for quality control and to see exactly how the coffee is doing. The first thing we're looking for is, did that batch come out the way we expected it to? Also, we're looking to see how has the coffees aged? Is there any effect of aging on the coffees themselves? And in this case, we're looking at three different blends of the coffee to see which one we may prefer more than the others, or just to see how they perform. So for today's video, we're using four different samples from yesterday's roasting session. So for our first sample, there's actually a blend of coffees that is 30% Chasqui Peru, and then 70 of the Nariño El Tiple from Colombia. Sample number two also uses the Nariño El Tiple from Colombia, as well as the Chasqui from Peru, but adds the third component, which is a Mount Elgin from Uganda. Then samples number three and four return to a 70% blend, but this time it's using 70% of the Mount Elgin from Uganda, and then 30% of the Chasqui from Peru. To test these coffees, we're gonna use the cupping method of tasting coffee. For that, we're gonna need our cupping cups. And for today's cupping, we're gonna actually use one sample from each coffee. So for each of these samples, we're gonna measure out 13 grams of coffee. All right, we put a medium coarse grind on these coffees because the method we're gonna be using is the cupping method, which means we're gonna steep the coffee in hot water for four minutes. So the water is always gonna be in constant contact with the coffee. So we can put a little bit coarser grind than we would if we were doing a pour over. So we've got our four samples. We're gonna use these trays to place our whole bean samples just as a roast reference point. All right, so now we've got our cupping laid out and it's time to give it a taste. So first thing we're gonna do is smell the aromatics. This one's got an interesting aroma. It's got this, and probably this is because I'm in Baltimore, but it's got this kind of Old Bay crab nuance to it. Maybe some paprika, black pepper. Ooh, very interesting nose. This one definitely has darker, like black pepper, some dark cocoa, a little more woodsy, like toasted notes. And then here we are, this is the the Uganda, 70% Uganda, and the 30% Chasqui Peru. This is definitely a warmer, chocolatey, a little bit of toast. In the fourth sample, we're out, we're getting the same kind of chocolatey, toasty notes. And that's kind of what we're looking for because these two are the same blends, just two different roast batches. So we're looking to see for uniformity between these two. Where these are kind of test batches, we just wanted to see how the different quantities of coffee affect the blend and the experience. Now the idea behind this is to be tasting coffees that we're gonna be using as our espresso blend. And that particular blend is a coffee that we want to give nice roasted notes of cacao, chocolate, as well as a little bit of fruitiness, and then a nice nuttiness on the finish. Something that goes really well with milk and can stand up for itself on its own. Definitely more of a medium profile than a light, but something very like robust and accessible without being too dark or too burnt or anything like that. We definitely are keeping it, as you can see here, in the medium roast profile. And why to do this when the big trend is for like lighter, brighter coffees? Mainly because this is the coffee that I think goes best both as an espresso and like in a cappuccino or a latte. Plus when you mix it with our ganache, it makes a stellar mocha. Now that we've done our aromas, we're gonna add the water. So basically we're taking water that's off the boil and we're just gonna fill it to the rim starting the timer as well. We're gonna bring the water level right to the edge, saturating all the coffees, well, saturating all the grinds, trying not to go overboard and overflow the cup. We're trying to do this all in one pour so that 
the cap that's being formed now on top of the cup remains whole and uh, floats. So we've got our timer running. We're almost at the four minute mark. What we're gonna do is we're also gonna take our time to smell the aroma of the wet coffee. So we're getting some nice aromas here. Lots of chocolate, lots of chocolate, lots of wood. Now that we passed the four minute mark, we're gonna break the coffee. So we're gonna take our cupping spoon and we're going to get down up into the coffee, pushing away while giving it a, a smell for the aroma. That one released some really nice, number one released some nice roasty notes with some cacao and a little bit of woodiness to it. On number two, we got some more of that cacao as well as a little bit of wood, but also this time we've got a little bit more of this fruitiness, kind of a tropical, like bright fruit. Number three gives us again more of that nice, warm, round, chocolatey notes, toasty, really kind of comfortable feeling, a little bit more milk chocolatey. And number four is giving us more of the same, which is great to see because, you know, while well, I said earlier that these are two different roasts, but they're also the same blend. So part of this is making sure that we're actually roasting the same batch to batch and getting the same results. All right, so time for us to clear off the stuff at the top. Take our cupping spoons and just skim. We're looking to skim most of the residue as well as all as hopefully all of the grinds that are floating and of course we're rinsing between between uses we're passing eight minutes total elapsed time we're really going to wait till about 10 minutes of elapsed time that way it allows the the coffee to cool down to a temperature that's a lot easier to taste and for the palate to experience all the flavors that are possible. All right, we've reached 10 minutes, so let's get into the tasting. So we're just gonna start off by taking a little bit of a sample with our cupping spoon, and then we're going to slurp and use the slurping action to essentially mix the coffee with the air like a spray gun in your mouth, coating, the entire, coating your entire palate. Now here's something you might want to consider. A lot of times you'll see people cupping and they'll use a, a spit cup. And the spit cup allows you to taste a lot of coffees throughout your day without actually ingesting all of the coffee and absorbing all of that caffeine. So while you can do it, you don't necessarily have to. It's all up to you. I like to use these paper cups because they're just easier to deal with. So our sample number one, which is the 30% Chusky Peru and 70% of the Nariño Colombia, this one is nice and warm and rich, milk chocolate tones with some really just nice milkiness to it. It's really a nice balanced cup, softer on the flavors. In this particular example with these, with these coffees, it's not so much, it's got the heavy chocolate that we're looking for. The fruit isn't really apparent because there's really nothing, there's really no natural coffees in this one to really bring out that fruitiness, but there is a nice nuttiness on the finish. So it's got majority of what we're looking for and can be a nice espresso blend. Let's move on to our sample number two. So number two is a 30% Chosky Peru, 30% Mount Elgin from Uganda, and 40% of the Nariño El Tiple from Colombia. So this one has is a three bean blend. It's got the most going on. It's a little bit, Heavier. It's got a heavier body, more dark chocolate notes that are really kind of like heavy and full and just kind of like a little bit mysterious. This is the kind of thing that really kind of be exciting, especially in, in milk with, a, with chocolate, like a mocha. The finish is a little more dry, cleaner. The nuttiness on the, on the finish is not as pronounced as in sample number one. 
but it's really a pleasant and nicely balanced coffee, but definitely has more body and is pushing a little bit more robustness in the flavor profile. So let's move on to number three. Now number three is moving into a territory where we've taken the Mount Elgin Uganda coffee, we've made it now 70% of the blend, and then have taken the Chusky Peru and reduced that down to 30%. So here you've got something that's a lot more, <sighs> this one has a really nice balanced kind of almost, well, it's bright. It's a bright balanced cacao, chocolate. It's, it, it's got a bright chocolate note to it. So if you can imagine a chocolate that has a nice bright, no, bright note to it, that's really what's at play here. There's also a light fruitiness, kind of like a light stone for like a peach kind of character peeking through. And then on the finish, the finish is a lot more, is a lot brighter. The nuttiness is really, is really, really downplayed now. Now we're not real, I'm actually not really getting much nuttiness at all. Um, but it is a very pleasant and lively finish. So let's go to number four. Again, number four is the same blend and different roast batches. So hopefully we've got the same thing going on because that's really what we want to see. We want to see evenness between the two batches. Now this one's slightly different. There's still that character of a bright chocolate, bright cacao. However, the brightness is a little bit more pronounced. It's a little bit more juicy on the palate. So you've got this nice juiciness. The peachiness is coming through a little bit more. The nuttiness is definitely pretty much non-existent. And, um, but I think it's really kind of interesting. That's really quite interesting. So that's it. That's pretty much basic blending. We've got our different samples. We've got uh, the sample one, two, three, and four. Three and four are pretty close. There is slight variances between the two. This one's a little bit brighter, a little bit more peach, where the here, the, pe the peach is a little bit less pronounced, a little bit more diminished. A little bit, the cacao's coming a little bit stronger, brighter cacao, well, a brightness to the cacao, and a stronger cacao taste, where this one has a lighter on the cacao and more on the bright peachiness. Then these two are just, you know, a little bit different. As of the date of this recording, three and four actually represent what's going to the shops right now. So these should be there for quite a while. We just got some of these coffees in, so we're just working with them, trying to find the right roast profile to bring out what exactly what we want. But I think this is really, really interesting, really nice. We've got nice chocolate notes with a little bit of brightness, some peachiness. The nutty of this is a little bit diminished. We might try to lengthen out the roast to get to develop that a little bit more, see if we can pull a little bit of nuttiness out. But I think that the way that it's playing here in the cup with this nice lingering, like bright, clean finish. I think that's gonna make really nice espresso. This is pretty much how we evaluate our espresso blends, seeing which coffees we like better and trying to mix and match and then work with the different roast profiles, um, the different roasting times. These all have about the same roast times or very similar roast approaches. So the roasting is similar, but it's bringing out different flavors from each of the different coffees. And then the different blends of coffee is gonna have impact as the way it tastes. I hope this helps give insight into what we do and how you might be able to do it on your own. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Be happy to answer them. And um, hope you enjoyed this. Have any ideas for future videos? Let me know as well. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate you spending the time with us. See you next time.